Well, uh, thank you, Athena, for helping with my project. I was wondering if we could start out by maybe you talking a little bit about yourself. Okay, sure. Um, what would you like to know? Uh, where do you live? Uh, what do you like to do for fun? Uh, what are your interests? That type of thing. Okay, so I live in Ohio, um, Bradford, Ohio, and I like to read and write, and I like to cook and bake and play video games and watch TV. Uh, what are some video games you play? Um, well, right now I'm playing Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm almost done with it. And um, I like basically anything by Valve and like a lot of first person shooters, um, like Call of Duty and stuff like that, you know, really basic stuff. but. You know, it's a lot of fun. Well, um, did you know that uh, NASA is planning to send people to the moon in 2024? I did not know until I read your um, website. So I did not have previous knowledge of that. Um, out of the like 260 people I've interviewed so far, I would say only about 50 of them did. And oh, really? I was wondering, um, in, in your opinion, what does NASA need to do differently to kind of uh, increase the awareness of it? Um, I feel like if they made, uh, like, posters of it, like, on, like, Times Square, like, if they had, like, big advertisements for it, I guess, which I don't see why it would, like, have to be something that would be advertised necessarily, because, like, it's not like they're trying to, like, get people to buy into it, so I guess it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for it to have ads necessarily, but, I mean, it is good to know, like, or to like tell the people what they're doing, I guess. So like if they are planning to go to the moon, it would make sense that they would be like informing everyone. So I guess ad isn't the right choice of words on my part for that. But uh, I, I think commercials would be a good idea like before uh, like YouTube videos or before like uh, you watch a movie on Amazon. Yeah, I mean, the military does all these recruitment ads, you know, and kind of like gives an idea of sort of what their mission is, but you, you really don't see that same type of uh, interaction from other agencies. Um, That's true. Yeah, it's probably because the military really wants people to join all the time. So it makes more sense why they like put more effort into uh, advertising to people, I suppose. And, you know, I think we've gotten really good at trying to ignore advertisements, you know, because they're like constantly bombarding us. Um, yeah. If NASA was trying to say reach you, for example, uh, what's an ad that would appeal to you? Um, that's a good question. Something like minimalistic and like short, I guess, like, like something like quick and to the point. Like, I hate ads where it's like, uh, like a two minute long ad. I'm like, I'm not gonna watch that whole thing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think, uh, especially, I hate commercials where they're like fake inspirational, where it shows like, oh, like a family, like, you know, or like um, some wholesome stuff. It's like, but then it's about like coffee. And I'm like, that had nothing to do with anything. So I just, I don't know. I hate when commercials try to like, um, I guess, invoke emotions in you that aren't related to the product at all. So for NASA, it would make sense for them to show like the stars and like really pretty scenery. And I would be like captivated. I'd be like, wow, that's like really cool. Like, that's awesome that they're exploring such a, you know, pretty thing. Uh, so I guess that would be how you could advertise to me is if you had a lot of really pretty imagery. <laughs> That makes sense. Um, do you remember uh, the last thing that you heard about NASA doing, just to kind of understand how a variety of thoughts that might be out there? Um, well, the last time I like paid attention to what NASA was doing was in, uh, I can't remember if it was 2000, I think it was 2010 when they uh, sent a rocket up and like I was in Cocoa Beach at the time. So like I saw the rocket go off and I was only like 11 and I was like, that's pretty freaking cool. So 
uh, other than that, it's been like a decade um, that I haven't really been <clears throat> paying close attention to what they've been doing, so. And uh, what do you think about us going back to the moon? Um, do you think it's a, a good and worthwhile thing or do you have some questions about, is that really the, the best use for that money and we should spend something else or, you know, kind of how do you think about it? Well, honestly, I think that it's like cool. Like I'm not against it, but I also don't think it's like exactly where our focus should be because like, especially now more than ever with like so many tropical storms happening and like all these wildfires, like it's, we should probably take care of our own planet before we like head to, you know, other places. Um, I mean, like I'm totally like for the idea of like space travel and like exploring the other things out there, but I just think not right now because it's like not the best time for it, you know? Um, so I am, I am for it, but we should hold off on it until we get better, uh, a better grasp on like the environment of our planet because it's kind of in a really bad place right now. And whenever you think about the environment of our planet, like what are the, the biggest problems you see? I mean, what, what do you think is the most urgent thing to tackle? Um, that's a really good question. Um, I would say probably the amount of plastic in the ocean or the rapid decline of the rainforest because we constantly tear it down. <laughs> um, but definitely, oh, oh wow, that's a really good question. There's so many issues. Um, pollution in like smaller bodies of water, like fresh water or microplastics in the ocean. I would probably say something to do with water, probably the ocean, um, considering that's like what most of our planet is made up of. Um, and like the, the plastic in the oceans, um, I mean, if you could, you know, kind of do something to clean that up, like, uh, you know, let's say, create some program or something like that of what do you think would actually be the most effective way of addressing that? See, it's really hard uh, to tell because like if we were to like scoop all the plastic, hypothetically, if we were to scoop all the plastic out of the ocean, then what would we do with it? Because it would just be more plastic in a big pot. Like we already have so many landfills and like there's so much trash already on land and that's the whole reason we started putting it in the ocean in the first place is because it's like, well, we kind of ran out of room to put this anyplace else. So if we did take all the plastic out of the ocean, what would we do with it beyond just making more landfills, you know, um, which isn't really ideal either. Um, and then, you know, there's always the option to just shoot it into space. I guess we could have landfills on the moon and just put all of our trash in the new landfills up there in space. <laughs> yeah, I often wonder, you know, why couldn't we just like uh, reuse it? Um, I have uh, some 3D printers that, you know, print using plastic and what have you, you can make little 3D things. And I kind of envisioned the ideal system would be, you know, you use something and then you like put in some type of disposal bin and it gets melted down and becomes feedstock for the 3D printer again. And, you know. Yeah, definitely. I think reusing is like one of the most important things that we can do. But uh, I see so much stuff about like how like plastic doesn't actually get recycled or like it's all a big like hoax or scam and it's like hard to know like if recycling really does any good or like what becomes of the plastic that you do recycle. So I think it's important like for individuals to reuse as much as they can, like instead of using like plastic grocery bags, you know, like get reusable ones and like reusable produce bags. But the problem with that now with the coronavirus is that you're not allowed to use your reusable produce bags and stuff because they have to keep it like sanitary. So like the fresh plastic bags are like the only way that they can do that. So sustainability during a virus is really difficult because everything has to be like new and clean and sanitized and stuff. Yeah.
that's that's very true. And I mean, I think to your point, uh, I've seen similar articles about all of our plastic being like stored in warehouses that are just overflowing and you know eventually being thrown away. And the and there's this Dilbert uh, cartoon uh, about the janitor going around and he has only one uh, can and he's putting both the recycle and the trash into it. Oh yeah. <laughs> and Dilbert's like, you know, what's what's up with that? And he's like, well, it really doesn't make any doesn't matter at all. It ends up in the same place anyway, so that's kind of depressing. But you know, if if people could see the recycling in person, uh, I think that may make a big difference. I mean, if you had like instead of going to the store to buy um, something, actually had it manufactured in your house, and then after you got rid of it, you disposed of it, and that material was reused to make the next thing that you needed. Um, I mean, it seems like that would be like a very powerful technology to have. Yeah, that would be really cool if you could just take the plastic you weren't using and then make it into new things that you needed. That'd be really awesome. Yeah, and you know, it, it can't do everything, but I mean, you can make like you know, plastic mugs and you can make like the little plastic, uh, let's see, the shower curtain things always seem oh, to yeah. be one short of those uh, and, you know, what have you. Um, well, uh, one of the things that they plan to do whenever they go to the moon is actually put the first woman on the moon. Uh, we had uh, six landings on the moon, each of which contained uh, two uh, men. I was wondering if that, um, you know, it's, makes you more excited about it or if it doesn't factor into it or what do you think? Um, it's a really good question. I think, uh, I definitely think diversity is always a good thing. Um, but I guess in this case, it doesn't really matter who gets to the moon first. You know, like it's just important that we're putting people on the moon at all. Um, so I guess, it doesn't matter that much to me if that person is a man or a woman or anything else. I think the most important thing is just that humans in general are, you know, going to the moon. So I don't know, that's really tough to say because I kind of feel like I'm not a feminist if I say like it doesn't really matter to me, but I just think it's more of a humanity thing rather than like um, I don't know. I don't want to like divide. Uh, I don't know. It's a really tough question, I guess. Yeah, uh, last year, I think it was last year or maybe the year before last, we had the first um, all-female spacewalk at the on you know at the International Space Station, and one of the astronauts involved was like, um, you know, they felt really honored to be part of it, but um, they also felt like it was really good to be past that and for it not to matter anymore. And I think that's probably where we want to be is where, you know, it, we've had enough participation that everybody feels included and, you know, it's, it's just people at that point. Yeah, I would agree with that. Like, um, it's definitely nice to see like variety, like it's definitely an important thing, but it's not like that much of a priority to me, I guess. And uh, so we have a couple of billionaires that are interested in space. Um, Elon Musk, I'm sure you've heard about, and his uh, plans to build a um, city on Mars. Uh, I was wondering if this is something you've you've heard about. Um, I didn't know about the city part, but I did know that he's very interested in space. Yeah, uh, so he wants to build a, a hundred, um, no, no, sorry, a million person city on Mars by like 2050 is sort of like the, the goal. And he's been wow. working on uh, developing this 100% reusable spacecraft in uh, Southeast Texas uh, called the Starship. And they're actually um, building stuff and testing it. And it looks like it might happen. The same vehicle would also be able to be used for point to point earth travel. So you could go from like, you know, Ohio to New Zealand in like 40 minutes. Well, that'd be kind of cool actually. <laughs> yeah, that's how they're hoping to pay for it. That and the internet. Um, you know, worldwide internet service. Um, but did you know that Jeff Bezos also has a space company? I did not know that. Yeah. In fact, um, they have a very interesting funding model. Uh, he sells a billion dollars a year of his Amazon stock to uh, fund his company. And he's been doing that since like uh, 2000. Wow. Um, but uh, his vision is a little bit different. He's like, 
you know, the Earth is like the absolutely best place in the solar system. And so what he wants to do is develop um, space infrastructure to actually protect the Earth in the sense that, you know, energy production and mining and manufacturing to actually move all those things away from the Earth and uh, use only the Earth for like life and residential and, and that type of thing. And I was wondering, um, you didn't really talk about like, um, like air pollution in the sense of, you know, all the carbon in the atmosphere. Um, but uh, I was wondering what you thought about uh, that vision of essentially using space to do all those things that had historically been hurting the earth. Well, I don't really think it's a good idea to like go mess up other planets just because we've messed up ours so much. Like, like my like stopping mining on earth just to go do it somewhere else doesn't really feel right either because i mean i know there's like not really other inhabitants on the planets that we would be go like if we went to mars to mine it's not like we would be like hurting the wildlife there because there is none that we know of but um it just feels like wrong to just like go somewhere completely untouched by humans and be like, first thing we're gonna do is uh, use all its resources and mine it and take everything like back to our planet because we messed our planet up so bad. So I don't know if I like really agree with that idea so much. It doesn't matter uh, kind of what you're mining, uh, you know, doesn't matter if it's like a planet or a moon versus say an asteroid. I mean, how does your, how do you feel about that? Oh, that, hmm, that's a good question. I guess it wouldn't really matter if it was just like an asteroid or like uh, a space rock. Well, I guess all planets are space rocks. Um, but I feel like moons are essential to like a planet's, well, I don't know. A, well, because that, especially if you like don't classify Pluto as a planet, that kind of like puts it up into the like free reign category. Um, I guess it would be okay to mine like asteroids that are passing by and stuff because they don't really matter. But like something that's so fixated is like a planet. Like, I mean, we've had our set universe for so long, like the sun or solar system, not universe. We've had our set solar system for so long that it would be like a shame to mess it up, you know, but like if there's just like, you know, an asteroid passing by like that's totally inconsequential, then I feel like that would be okay to like mess with, but hmm, I guess the planets are just above uh, that kind of bar in my mind, you know? Yeah, I think a lot that of people... Sense. I think a lot of people have some uh, real issues with like defacing the side of the moon that faces the earth and like seeing like the scar of humanity always looking down at you. But uh, people might feel very different about um, mining the, the side of the moon that never faces the earth and they're like, you know, out of sight, out of mind type of thing. Um, I think it would be like equally as bad just because you don't see the other side doesn't mean it's not there. Well, it's kind of like how people in America like literally don't care about third world problems at all because out of sight, out of mind. But then, you know, if uh, like we just don't think about the issues of the rest of the world because we don't see it. So it would make sense that, that a lot of people would have the same mentality towards the moon. Like as long as you don't see the other side of it, then it's not your problem to deal with. But I think it's just as messed up to like mess with the other side as it is the side that faces us. Yeah, I mean, there really should be no difference from an actually doing a standpoint, but um, you know, but you could see how maybe a, a large set of the population probably wouldn't care about the side they don't see. Yeah. Um, so if it was safe and affordable, would you have any interest in going into space? Actually, yeah, I think it'd be really cool to, like, if they offered, like, um, like, kind of like a safari, but, like, into space where you just, like, take a ride up there and you get to, like, see some stars or, like, some really pretty 
or you know you just get to see earth from that viewpoint i think that'd be like really incredible um yeah i would definitely be willing to take a trip into the orbit you know to see what see what it's like up there because i love heights like i love seeing things from a really high perspective so like being on a plane and like looking down at the earth is like so interesting as it is so i I can't even imagine how cool it would be to go even like higher than that. Uh, there's a group um, that's planning to launch people in these big balloons that take you all the way like in the stratosphere and you can actually see the curvature of the earth and the blackness of space. It sounds like uh, something you might be interested in. That does sound really cool. Uh, would you consider going further like uh, a week long trip to the moon or maybe a couple year trip to Mars? Um, I would definitely do a trip to the moon. I don't think I would do to Mars just because like that's a lot of time. Like you said, a couple years because I'm sure the trip there and the trip back would be like a long time. And I feel like there's so much that could go wrong and to be that far away from like Earth would be kind of terrifying. But like if something goes wrong on the moon, like you could probably get reinforcements pretty quickly, you know, like um, or like help from Earth pretty quickly, but Mars would just be like too far out there, I guess, for now. Um, but yeah, I would probably totally go to the moon if they set up like a resort. As messed up as that is, if they set up a resort on the moon, I would probably go. That's awesome. And, and how safe would it need to be? Um, well, it would need to have oxygen at least. <laughs> That's probably like a bare minimum. Um, safety, I don't know. I mean, it's the moon. So I guess as long as there wasn't any like, I, I kind of imagine it like uh, it would be like a dome and then um, like the residency would be like inside the dome. Um, so as long as there weren't any like cracks in the dome or like uh, any chance of it like shattering suddenly and all of us being sucked into the vacuum of space, then I'd feel pretty confident about it, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. And oh, and it would need to have like, if it was a resort or whatever, it would need to have like years worth of like uh, emergency food just in case something like catastrophic happened where like we couldn't get back to earth like when we were supposed to and we had to like wait like a really long time for like uh to get sent back home or whatever so that way we wouldn't like run out of food or whatever so i guess just making sure that they would be prepared for the worst would be like the ideal now uh, talking about safety is a really slippery thing uh because i mean exactly how do you quantify it i mean ultimately people don't care how safe uh, something is as I mean like the numbers don't matter if you're in danger right I mean if it's like one out of a hundred and you're that one then you're like it's not safe right but yeah uh, one way to kind of think about safety is um, how many people need to go without instant before you would feel safe going you know is that like uh, 10 100 a thousand a million um, I guess I would feel like uh, if at least a hundred thousand people had gone to, or even less probably, I'd probably settle with like 50,000. If 50,000 people had gone to the resort on the moon and come back safely, then I'd be like, yeah, okay, I'll give it a try. That sounds like a decent number. Like one in 50,000 is a pretty good chance or pretty slim chance. So I'd probably go with that. And the, the affordable side, um, you know, that's also a really difficult thing to kind of quantify, but one one place uh, that you could kind of think about it is uh, opportunity costs, like how much of a year's salary would you be willing or income would you be willing to give up for it? Is that like, you know, five years worth to the moon and back or, you know, uh, maybe half a year's for like the balloon ride to the stratosphere. So if you were going to the moon, um, how many multiples of your income, yearly incomes, would you be willing to give up for that? I actually don't have a yearly income because I don't really have a job. So um, that's a really good question. Um, so I guess I don't 
I don't have a job, so it's really hard to say, but uh, in light of that, I'll just uh, pretend like that if I had a job that made like 100,000 a year, let's say, that's kind of high, but um, I would be willing to spend like probably, or put like a quarter of that towards a trip to the moon, because that's still 75,000 a year, and then set aside that 25,000 for a really cool trip like that, that'd be really cool. But I'm sure that a trip to the moon would be more expensive than $25,000. Yeah, it's difficult to say, you know, uh, traveling from, uh, you know, Houston to Europe uh, used to be a lot more expensive than it is now too. So, uh, or, or even, you know, this conversation that we're having now, just thinking about like 25 years ago, there would be per minute charges. Oh, yeah. Kind of. Yeah, now it's totally free. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I talk to people in Pakistan and China and India wow. and Japan, and it's like that's awesome. Really awesome. Um, well, I really appreciate your time. Is there anything you wanted to talk about that we didn't get to? Oh, um, I was curious about your selection process for like people that you interview. Uh, I guess like how do you like decide? Do you just like find random people on Twitter and you're like. I'm going to interview you. Um, so originally, so I've been working at home for two years before this coronavirus thing. And so last December, I was like, I have a cure for social distancing. I'm going to, because I, I would go like days or maybe sometimes weeks without interacting with anybody other than people at the house. And so I was like, I really want to um, have a project that forces me to get out and talk to people like in person. So last December, whenever I started the project, it was people at the coffee shop at the stores, on the streets, at the airport, you know, random people. Mm. I mean, like I took a trip to uh, London, York, and Edinburgh, and I got to interview people along the way. So that's kind of neat. You know, it, like you have no real reason to talk to people, but you kind of go and say, hey, I got this project. Can I talk to you for a little bit? And so I thought that's kind of neat. Um, honestly, online, um, I, I wouldn't say that there's a selection process. I would say it's more of trying to, um, I find anybody willing to talk. So um, I'm interested in the, the widest uh, point of views as possible. So if you have uh, people in mind that you think uh, would be willing to participate, uh, hopefully you can send them my way. Yeah, sure. I, I mentioned it to a couple of friends and they were like, that sounds really cool. And I was uh, thinking, you know, like since you have to fill so many slots that, yeah, I could definitely send them your way. That'd be great, though. I got to be honest, I'm really looking for that day. I could go up to somebody in a coffee shop and I'd be safe to like ask them. Um, yeah. You know, that'd be, a, that'd be a part of it. But yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Well, thank you so much. You have a good rest of your day then. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye bye.